No. Okay. All right. Good evening. Welcome to the town of Brook Brookfield uh, Select Board meeting for March 2nd, 2023. Please rise and say the pledge. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, announcements. Um, I, I'd ask that you join me for a moment of silence for Bertha Nolan, who passed away at the age of 97 on February 24th. Bertha was a lifelong resident of Brookfield. She worked for the town in the collector's office and the town clerk's office. She read to Brookfield preschool and elementary school children and was known as Mother Goose. Thank you for that. All right, so we'll move on to the approve the warrants. Um, Brad, did you want to give a report on those? Sure. I vote to approve the warrants FY 2317, accounts payable $294,824.67. Uh, FY 2317 payroll $182,340.47. FY 2317 withholding $69,041.68. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. First item on the agenda is a public hearing to vote on early voting for the next election. We have a letter from the town clerk. Um, so they're writing the follow up regarding the voting on the agenda item. Um, the reason why they're asking to not um, allow for early voting was that, um, let's see here. As you know, the legislature now allows for mail-in voting for primaries in state elections. Local municipal elections can have them as well unless the select boards vote by roll call not to. There are a few reasons I'm re requesting that the selectmen opt out of mail-in voting. The first is cost. Holding a special election along with the general, we exhausted our expense and wages accounts. I've already requested the advisory board for an additional $2,500 from the reserve fund for election expense account. And I will also be requesting to supplement the wages account as there's not enough money to cover the wages for the election. I'd also like to note that residents who cannot make it to the polls can request an absentee ballot. I understand that you would like to get a determination of vote by mail numbers. The state primary ballots mailed was 430. State primary ballots returned by mail $390. Cost was $361. State election ballots mailed was 716. Returned was 630. Cost of the election ballots mailed was 644, $601.44. Despite all of this, the numbers did not improve voter participation in either of the elections. We had 1,400 for the governor's race this past November, and in 2016, we had 1,531 votes. I guess my concern would be is how much worse would it be if they didn't have mail-in voting as an option? Mm -hmm. You can't prove Well, the that's not what he's saying. Yeah. They can still request an absentee ballot. They can still mail-in right. vote. It's just they can't early vote. Do you see the, the distinction in there? So if you can't yeah. get there, you absolutely have the option have to do an absentee ballot. You still have ballot. the option to do an absentee ballot. Yeah. So it, if... Um, is the absentee ballot available to anyone who wants it or with, uh, or is there a, a restriction or rule as to who can be granted an absentee ballot? I don't know the answer no, to that question. Anyone, I think anybody can anyone, request yeah. it if they're out of town. They can. You can't ask for an absentee ballot absentee if you can come here, but like mm -hmm. because you don't feel like leaving the house. But I, if you're not going to be here, I believe you can. So I think that might be the only restriction. If you're housebound, well, I think, I think, you can, I think the you can yeah. add, I think ask for it. I think that's the difference. Is that it's it gets rid of 
the no excuse mail in ballot. Mm -hmm. Like and I think there are some very specific restrictions on the absentee ballot. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with it. I don't know for sure. And the expenses he's citing, are those um, linear with regards to the number of absentee ballots? So, or the number of early voting ballots, if you will? So that if fewer people in the past had exercised that option, we would have had a lower cost? We would not have had that cost if they didn't have the early voting because he needed people here to take and do the early voting mm -hmm. work. So the mailing, the people had to mail the ballots out. It, it, this is directly related to the early voting, the cost. Mm -hmm. But I guess the question is, is it directly related to the number of people who early voted or is it more of a fixed cost where he needs to have staff and, be, and accommodate it whether people show up or not? I don't believe it was a fixed, it's a fixed cost. So it's, it's proportional to the number of people who vote. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because he called in extra help when he, there were too many to do in the time limit mm -hmm. that he had to accomplish the goal. So my question is, what he says here, you know, state primary ballots mailed and returned by mail. So when, I, when I've absentee voted, I mail... It was mailed in, I believe. Right, so people requested them, and only that many people returned them, even though he mailed out the requested 430, only 390, or whatever the number is. Oh, I got you. So he mailed out 430, returned, and, and received And 390 that took the time to mail them back. And that was part of early, early voting? Early voting, yeah. Not absentee ballot voting, there's an early voting number. Are, this, are there similar costs with absentee? No, because, no, because absentee, you ballots, absentee ballots, you, you can pick it up or he can mail it, but those ballots are then received and then calculated the night of the vote, the early voting, even though it's, it's just a really different complicated setup. Um, but as I said, I, he's, I don't have the answer to. Um, how because if all, those if all those people, I, I guess what I'm getting at, if the 430 people that requested them decided to still do absentee ballot? They'd have to not be here, I think, though, right? I think that's the thing with so the absentee way that it, ballot is you have you to... You qualify for absentee ballot when you're voting in a local election if you are... Um, here, somehow I managed like, to... I can't, over. so I work out of, so, I work over in Berkshire County and I can't get to the voting polls because I'm not here during that time, I could have requested an absentee ballot. Yeah, yeah so I, you, I feel like there was no reason. I mean, granted, when I have done absentee, I was out of town, but he didn't ask me to prove it or anything. Yeah, you'll, you'll be away from your city or town on election day. You have a religious belief that prevents you from voting at your public polling location on election day, or you have a disability that prevents you from voting at your polling location. Yeah. So, um, so I guess it's a question, do we want to put the onus on the, so for, and this is where it just, it, it creates an extra step for somebody that wants the absentee vote and, and presumes that they would be eligible for one of those categories, right? So there are people who at the beginning of the year said, hey, I want all of my ballots ma mailed. So for those people who already took that step, um, you know, we're telling them they need to take another step, mm -hmm. okay? Which may be fine. Does that apply to local? I know it applies to state and federal because those you can't vote not to do. I don't know. But does that That's apply a good to question. local? And I, I would also, I mean, this is why you probably should have been here, but I mean like, what was the cost <clears throat> in prior elections when we didn't have early voting and there was? We have had I haven't seen, looking back in the spreadsheets, that he ran over in his voting budget. Right. He's level funded it every year because he's always had enough money in it, and he's yeah. down twenty five hundred dollars yeah. from that one election. From that one election. Yeah. Mike said you could call him if anyone had any questions. He'd be willing to. Well, he might just not have the figures if I asked him right. that, though. Yeah. Well, I guess one of the questions I would have, right, is that. Um, 
How did the special election along with the general drive that much more expense in wages? Because, I mean, hypothetically, all they did was print a second ballot. No, not even close. They had to be um, entered into the, it's, I watched them go through it. I, he had two or three people working every day, some on the computer, them trying to separate the ballots and calculate and tabulate all of all And that's because the, people were coming in. Because everything was done by mail. And when they do it by mail, there's a very specific process they have to follow. And it, it, it took a lot more staff and it took weeks to get it done. But which is why they've extended the amount of time to certify an election because of the mail-in ballots, because it takes so much longer to do the actual physical work behind receiving them and, and entering them into the state computer and Because they have to them enter them out. every day versus if it's they absentee, have to, they, they have wait, to go through every go single in. one of them and verify the signatures, make sure that their residence is right. It's not the same as coming in, crossing your name off a list and dropping your ballot in the box. So, I'm sorry, what were you saying, Brad? Um, yeah, right. No, you were basically saying what I was saying. Mm -hmm. That if they... Um, if it's an absentee ballot, they mail it in, it all gets held until election day, and right. then they open them all up at once and throw mm -hmm. them and through. And throw them through. Yeah. That doesn't work with this. These right. all have to be verified. Anytime, if there's one in the mail that day, they have to figure it out, put it together, tabulate it, put it through the machine. They don't put it through the machine or until they, that day, but they have to verify it. they got to match up signatures, which means yeah. they've got to go so through all the signature they have cards. To, I think my understanding is they have to have it ready so that it, it's just when the day, when election day comes, they just take all the ballots that have been received and they put them through the machine because yeah. all the pre-check has been done. Right. It's and as though they've just been submitted ready for putting into the tabulator. Yeah. But the, the pre-checking and running it through the state system and running it through the town's records and is very cumbersome. Yeah. Um, the cost numbers here in his, does, is that just mailing cost or was that the staffing costs also of the special processing that the early voting required? Well, he's asking for $2,500 more, which includes the staffing costs. I don't see that in, I, I, I don't know if that was just the mailing costs. Yeah, that's what I... Because he, why would he ask for $2,500 extra like, that he went under? I, or that's what he's anticipating the upcoming one is going to cost, but he ran out of money. Mm -hmm. Well, he ran out of money because yeah, we ended up having an extra election than we usually do. I would he, think. He's budgeted the same amount of money every year for yeah. multiple but, years. But, but, and, yes, but, and we have, special. and there are we had town elections and election. federal elections in the fall. Right, yeah. but we had an extra but election. But the town election in the fall, I think, was not on is not typical we did, the town special election was, was well the town typical. special election was not but well, but an election in the fall is not untypical when yes. it's with the state something so. that doesn't make sense here is we've been doing this mail-in voting and early voting for what two years now i don't i don't know was, i don't think was it available in 20 the 20 was the first big election of the pandemic and then the 22 the most recent state federal election in 22 was i expect the second one yeah. So. Yeah. I mean, really, Mike's the one that you should be asking these questions mm -hmm. to because he's the one who's got the data. Do we want to put him on the phone? Do you want me to well, I, I think I see what you're getting at and where my concern is. There's 390 people of 700 people that voted that took advantage of this. So the people that are actually voting, a lot, a large portion of them came well, in. Yeah, actually, though, he didn't, he didn't give us the full numbers to, to judge that, and that's one of the things that you know. Right now. Yeah. yeah, but for example, so it, actually, what it is is that 630 of the 1,481 folks that voted in the fall election voted by mail. Okay, so. Um, Nearly half of the town voted via mail or chose to vote. Hi, Mike. The select board would like but to only, speak here. I'm going to put you on speaker. But only okay, no, but a couple questions. You're looking at the state election. He's asking for the local election, right? Right. I understand that. So, and those aren't in here. All right. Those can you numbers. hear us? Hey, Mike. Can you hear us? Yes. Great. 
I think there were a number of questions around the room. I'm going to let the gentleman go first. All right. Hey, Mike, it's Tom. It's, uh, I, I guess one of the questions is that your, the, uh, the cost numbers you provided for the uh, primary $631 and change and the uh, general election, general state election, 601 and change, was that just postage costs or did, was that the whole enchilada? Just postage. Postage, okay. Do you have any insight as to how much early voting um, cost us in total in addition, like postage and everything else, the additional staff time needed to... Um, staff time? Uh, yeah. It was, you know, I managed to get the postage down to about 
I know we have I know we have forty five days. What if we Well what's what's your concern? What do you think what do you think what do you think this is gonna do if we don't allow mail in votes? You know, what's your concern? Convenience? My main concern would be participation is that the people are used to it now. It's it's the it's it's this is how this is this is the will of the people and so therefore making it as easy no, uh, let me no voting expresses the will of the people is what I'm trying to say Mike oh, oh. yeah yeah now I'm not saying early voting is the will of the people I'm saying the voting is how they express their will and therefore I am philosophically inclined to make it as easy as possible for, for the, the as possible. residents of the town the citizens of the town to vote and so therefore if when I'm being asked to cut off something that or make a change that makes it even a little bit harder I got to think about the cost benefit and is there like I mean if we saved a hundred thousand dollars by doing this it's like okay you got my attention it's like if we're saving a couple thousand dollars I'm a little more on the fence and it, it and it's a value call that, that we that we have to make and so we're just trying to understand the um, your thought is to um, how many people avail themselves of this and I mean and it seems like it's going to cause you it's because of the additional expense involved you're going to need at least 2500 additional dollars um, your request to the finance committee for um, for reserve fund spending was that predicated on the expectation that there would not be mail-in voting this year oh yeah that's that just basically covers the balance in the, in the, uh, in the cards Mm -hmm. And so forth. And I've got another outstanding bill for the census of eight hundred and seventy five dollars. So that twenty five hundred dollar figure was fairly conservative and it may not cover everything on the expense fund. Where we're at right now, I mean we have about seven hundred dollars left in uh, in salary, which has got to cover election work. Oh, so forth, so that's that's definitely not going to cover our election. Um, mm -hmm. On that, so I'll be requesting at least another thousand for the reserve fund on that as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess the the question I have to you is, and I'm not expecting the hardest number uh, possible, but in, in your experience, what is the estimated expense or what is the estimated savings if we take voting by mail off the table for the citizens of the town how much does the town save in its administration cost the election you know i honestly don't know it's really hard to say i mean i guess it's as good as mine the truth of the matter is it depends on what kind of a race we have is it are we going to have contested races is it going to be great interest is it going to be another year where we don't have any races. And in that case, it just makes it kind of a full point, probably. You know, so I, I honestly don't know. Okay, you know? I, that, fair enough. But that brings us back to, do we remove this voting option so, so, from the so, town? So what, what I'm hearing is it's gonna cost us an extra 3,500 to run the elections regardless of what we do and the mail-in cost is maybe you know somewhere between 350 and probably around 350 dollars if 10 percent of it is to still allow people to mail and vote i don't know that i have i don't know that i have any particular will to indicate we're not going to mail and vote mm -hmm. yeah i i think that 300 dollars is postage only and then there'd be the on top of that would be those My, Mike's staffing costs to process the ballots as they come in, and um, I don't know if he, ha other than postage, I don't know if he has any other expenses that are not um, clerks to process the mail-in ballots. Uh, I guess that'd be a question for you, Mike. Um, for a mail-in ballot, um, the, addi the additional cost of mail-in ballot, there's the postage. There is, there is the, the clerk cost, or the, there's, there's the staff cost to actually do all the validation and make sure that the ballot is valid and can be put into the to be counted pile. Um, what additional? Yeah, yeah, well that's 
<laughs> hours. Mike's salary. Well, there's my, well, Mike's, <laughs> Mike's salary, but that takes his hours away from his other duties. Yeah. Or a, a clerk who could be paid, who's a, or he could assign a clerk to it who works in his office. But in, in, in addition to those two, what are the other additional costs for processing mail ballots? You know, off the top of my head, I can't really think about it. I mean, it's, it's time consuming where we alphabetize all the ballots. We store them, you know, we check them in, and then it's a matter of, uh, you know, just taking them out of the vault during election day, and then the staff has to go through them when they have some time during election day. But then we have to tally later at the end of the night and count those. But one of the big problems that we had, and I don't know if this is not. What a lot of folks like to do is they, you know, they get their ballot and then they don't mail it in. And then it's like a ballot that has to come in. And then they attempt to bring the ballot into the election area and they have to turn it away. And then it gets processed by me. And you know, we spend a lot of time doing that. Yeah. And now you have the extra processing on a ballot that arrived on election day and you don't have the extra time to process it. Why would they want to mail in well, a yeah, ballot and then lock it in? There can't be that many because it's not. They cannot take the ballot out of the envelope or just go up to the ballot machine. It has to be processed in the office. Yep. If we had a lot of that, that's why it's a real late and they can then thereafter as well. Yeah, and that's and the, and the, the system just doesn't support that. People who for and. Uh, Kelly, I think that most of those people are people who forgot to mail their ballot in in time and are saying, well, I'll just hand deliver it. How hard can it be? And it's like, <laughs> oh, let, let Michael tell you. So you've got the cost of the ballots, which you're going to have to pay for anyway, but then how many envelopes do you use to mail the ballots? Because it goes out with a special envelope that they have to return it in, plus the envelope that it goes out in. Is that why the costs for mailing were so high? Well, yeah, because you're basically triple wrapping. I mean, I would hope that as people, if, as we go forward, people get used to the idea of mailing in their ballot and understanding that walking it in on election day is not something that can be done. And right. hopefully that, and that, and so hopefully people would get smarter. I, I find myself always hoping that and sometimes getting what I hope for. And then, Mike, for, for these, for the state, for the most recent, uh, for the last November election, um, uh, about how many voters did we have? How many voters were in that? Uh, yeah, how many people voted? 1481. 1481. Okay, I, I missed that number. That's not so. the local. That's the state. No, that, that was state. Yeah, no, that, that was my that's question. What he, that's what his question was. Oh, I'm was. sorry. I thought he yeah. said local. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, so, and, we, so and then, half of them. Near, nearly us. half of them. Yeah. And well, then convert yeah. and then uh, and then the follow on question is for a for a, the May town election, local election, what's our uh, what's our where would you put the over under? It's all over the place. I mean I can tell you it's a contested election. Mm -hmm. We see upwards of uh, seven hundred or I was gonna say seven fifty eight hundred. Okay. So. I mean, it's kind of all over the place. 
No, that, that's fair. But I mean, even with a contested election, we're looking at about half the voters versus compared to the uh, November election. I, I, I definitely agree with that. No. You're not going to see that kind of turnout for a, for a uh, November election. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yeah, it's not. It's in the 30s. 37 5 each, probably. That gets Look you to from 75. a 420s. Um, it's 70, combined $75,000, it looks like. Yep. Plus 75 and a little more. Yeah. 45 in expenses and 30 in wages. There you go. It used to be a combined number and it was $75,000, and then we split it out because. The account Lori wanted a separate wages and expenses account. Oh, I see. And so we so we took seventy five thousand dollars. We split it, mm -hmm. and then the wages has been getting bumped up to uh, reflect um, the general wages going okay. up. Okay. Yeah. And so yep. I know we couldn't. I know you can't reduce it because if you reduce your snow and ice expenditure or your no, you can increase it by a certain percentage over what the prior or average of a certain number of years. Oh, you can. I always yeah. thought if you reduced it, you couldn't deficit spend. No, I'm saying you can increase it over, like you use an average of so many years back mm -hmm. and you can increase it a certain percentage. You can't exceed that percentage. I don't think you can decrease it. Okay, that was my understanding yeah. also. You cannot give any, you don't have to budget any snow and ice. You mm -hmm. can just raise it on the recap, mm -hmm. yeah, which is not transparent and not recommended. But Yeah, I don't like that idea anyway. No, not at all. So I guess my question is, it's March 2nd and we've got, let's see, since the request we had the storm on Tuesday and we've got another storm coming mm -hmm. and the thought is they're getting close to deficit spending with those two storms? They said they would be out of money after the storm we just had is what I thought they said. Either way, they're going to be out of it's it It's going to be close. But it'll, it's, it's close enough that if, if you're, it, it's wise to give them permission to continue to work based on the number of storms. Yeah, and the weather's been saving it. Saving it for us. Okay, so do so I have a motion? I'll make a motion, if I'm doing it correctly, I make a yep. motion to uh, allow the highway, I give the highway department permission to deficit spend snow and ice account if needed. I'll second for discussion. I just want to see where they're Okay, second. Yeah. I've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Uh, yeah, I want. I just want to see what we have for, uh, for uh, Lori just put out another expenditure report. Mm, today, yeah. And I want to know It what does not include any bills submitted from last storm, though, because those would be on the, the warrant, warrant that's just, coming up and mm -hmm. is not posted. It yeah. would be in this week's bills. And not posted yet. Right. So it would be effective as of one or two weeks ago? Two I'm weeks sorry, ago. what? It would be as effective two weeks ago. Effective two weeks ago. It, it, would, yes. it would reflect all bills submitted as of two weeks ago. Because that's will, when. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's, that is correct. Yes. Right. This thing is giving me grief. No. All right. Uh, Honestly, I don't think it's going to make that big a difference if we approve it now. If they sp go over, they go over. If they don't, they don't. Yeah. So. Yep. So. All right. All right. Uh, so I've got a motion, a second, and it sounds like discussion is over. All mm -hmm. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Let's. And I guess the next thing to take up is the budget, budget review. I'm not even going to try to look at that. <laughs> it's tiny, isn't it? Yes. Oh, gosh. Reading glasses make it clear as crystal clear. <laughs> I put them on the end of my nose. So, um, just on a high level, and well, um, was at the um, department head meeting today. I just want to kind of review what I covered with them. Um, you know, we. It, we collectively, when I say we collectively, it was the select board and the advisory at one point had made a statement, hey, we'll, we'll typically match the federal COLA, right, as, as a starting point for where raises are. However, I don't think at that time, given like the 10-year trend prior to that, you were looking at between like 1.2 and, and maybe 2.8% being federal COLA in any one of those years. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think anyone foresaw a, an 8.9 percent cola hitting, you know, virtually overnight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and most of the 
a reasoning or rationale behind making the statement that we would do the COLA that way had to do with the fact that Brookfield, uh, by choosing to be different in many years and doing like zero or one or one and a half percent raises had gotten wage non-competitive for municipal jobs to the point that when we did the Collins Center um, review uh, that we were like well behind our near peer communities relative to the compensation we were offering our employees. But we did go through the process and rectify that a couple years back. And when we're, and the discussion that I had today is that really by having done that adjustment, what's a better indicator than the indicator than the federal COLA is really what our local and near peer communities this are. This is just doing, the federal right? COLA um, the history that's on the so federal website. So if you take out the, if you take out the recession, recession <laughs> in the 80s, um, it, it, in most instances, you're talking something that's between one and a half and three percent, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, when you th look at it from a from from a spending perspective, right? Proposition, you know, you know, um, from a from an overall budget perspective, you know, it, in my opinion, kind of the starting point we should talk about and one of the things they asked for is like one of the things they'd like to see is some level of predictability of at least what our target is in terms of our budget cycle and our and our wages mm -hmm. right so you know and, and I think I don't know we don't have a written we don't have a written budget process not that I'm aware yet, of no right and, and I think this may be an opportunity and it's too late for this year but I think I think we've you define the process informally this year, and I think there's some policy decisions that we need to talk about for future years where maybe we say for the next three years, when the department heads submit their budget, submit 2.5% as your raises, submit 3% as your raises, right? Pick a number that's a reasonable that we think, you know, at least has a snowball's chance in Hades of, of fitting in with the funds that come from the state, the revenues that we're projecting, what have you, with the understanding, hey, the policy or guidance is submitted this level. Depending on what the financials are and depending on what, what a, a market survey, you know, a, a locally held market survey relative to our positions and like what raises other towns are giving, gives, we reserve the right to adjust it from that hey, this is what you submit on an annual basis number department heads. Um, Can I interject? Yeah. So I think what they were asking is not for you to tell them what to, to not, not for the board to tell them what to request. I think what they were asking for is some predictability on what the board is going to recommend. Right. And they said, so if you can tell us that for the next three years, you're going to say 3% and we can count on that for three years, we're okay with that. Yeah as opposed to saying you're going to use this scale or that scale because it's been hodgepodge right. um, in the past. I think what they're looking for is, and they will submit what, what they're told is, is like, okay, so we're going to look, we're projecting out this and we're going to look at 3% every year for the next three years. And, and so that's something they can count on, they can work on, and they can, they can figure out yeah. their budget using I think that. we have to be careful, though, because we can't necessarily guarantee it because things happen. I mean, who knows? Understood. Right. Understood. But, yeah. but I think that's what they were saying. I'm just, right. no, that was okay. my understanding when, yeah. when we were done talking. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying. I'm yeah. just saying that oh, yeah, I'm, I, I don't, one of the things we have to be careful of is that it's not a... You know, it, it's not a guarantee, it's guidance, mm -hmm. right? And it, it's not a guarantee, it's a target, mm -hmm. right? If I was to set a target today, I'd say three. Yeah, I mean, that's I mean, what I, I, mean, that's that's what most what I companies do for everything, do. right? Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, that's what most companies do. I mm -hmm. mean, generally, when you look at, at, at a lot of, like, the bigger organizations, right. and I know everyone tells me municipal's not the same as corporate, I get it, but it, it's a planning factor, right? So, I think when the board voted, took the action um, to follow the, the federal call, it was as a guideline or a suggestion, but, you know, we will do this. Right. Um, and I think you're doing, doing kind of the same thing, but with uh, a set the, number. It's, it's setting a number. Yeah. 
So I think that's a good approach as opposed to saying, okay, when you submit your budget, submit it with no cola and we'll let you know what it will be. Right. That scares people right up front. Yeah. It does. So I think that's a good approach. I have two questions. Okay. The school budget. This, so what's the school cola? We only have the elementary school and their entire budget increase is seven and a half percent. Right, but we don't know what the COLA is for. What do they use they for budgeting? We, 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 would, we, would, we would need it. We'd have to go look at their contract. Okay. So it was a, the school and the police. That was just my question. What, how do they compare to, you know? Okay. But the police isn't a, a straight COLA. They're, they're also a step and grade. So right. that, that yes, we, we can't compare that either because it's, right. so I can give you, and we don't know what the overall increase will be because this is a negotiation year and we don't know what FY24's um, look like. salaries will look like yeah. for them. Okay. So. Madam Chair, I'd like to speak. Go for it, through me. Huh? Go ahead, through me. You uh, stated that the town gets zero to one and a half percent this town over the years has given more than other towns. Last year they get almost five, and all the other years they've got very good colas. More than the other In the towns, last six years. They've got very good increases it, in their colas. And then you had the columns dumped on top of that, uh, which didn't refer to towns from comparatively to Brookfield. There was other towns that didn't compare to us. You went out, out east with it, pays a lot different out there. So the callers in this town have been very, very good for the town of you know, Brookfield so, employees. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna debate you can just look in the back or before so, back. So Mr. Holmcraft, I'm not gonna debate this again because it was decided at town meeting. Right. Okay. What we're talking about is the the method that we're gonna use going forward based off of where we are today. I can tell you if we did a wage survey today we are on par with local communities relative to our pay scales. Not based at 8.7 or 8.9. Well, not with not with 8.9, but well, I'm I'm and I'm not even I don't know if you've been listening. Oh, I have. But we okay. We 8.9 is off the table. Okay, right? Well, I understand that. Too. Oh, okay. So so let's be clear. We're all starting from a what's reasonable and rational and fair to both the townspeople and the town employees. Right, that's, that's where, what, where we're trying oh, to yeah, get I to. Yeah, I get that, I get okay. that. All right. But well, you made a statement stating that, you know, we're way behind zero to we, nothing. We, well, that's I can tell you, in the, in, yeah. the, in the years prior, and I can, tell, I can tell you when I looked back, when I did a five year look back, when I first went on advisory back, I can't even remember what year it was, there were several years that were one. 014, 015. Yeah, there, there were several years where that was the case, right? And we got very far behind. Those were years when other towns were giving colas, and we did get behind. And that compounds itself, right? You have a run of years where there's zero, and you lose that compounding of those years that are zero or one percent, and and that's what caused the need for the adjustment. Uh, and and I know you can debate the methodology that was used with Collins, but if you look today of, right. of the wages in most of our primary positions, they are certainly not out of, um, there's not an order of magnitude difference between what we pay somebody who's the, you know, the uh, um, town clerk here to what somebody who's, you know, in, in a bunch of our neighboring communities. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. I'd like to see the year that we gave up until half a percent or one percent. I'd like to see what year that was. I'll go back and find it if you want. It was okay. it was it was on the look back on the original yeah, spreadsheet that I picked up. So um, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about no, what no, makes I, sense I for Brookfield. Your statement though, and that's what I was commenting yeah. on your statement, not how you're gonna go about okay. giving future goals. Yeah. But there was a period of time when this town didn't give raises for a, a fairly significant period of time. And and that's what generated the need for that adjustment. Okay. So, um, anyway. So are you looking for a motion to what we suggest for the COLA? Um, I don't think I'm there yet in terms of 
Uh, uh, well, first of all, if you want to make a motion relative to that, I'm okay with it. I know that Kelly was doing some, some research. I didn't know if we were at the point where we had any recommendations or you wanted to share what, we're, so, what we've been well, looking I can, at. I can share what, what I have for data from people who responded, and then I added the information that Marty had presented. Yeah. I, I have a question. So mm -hmm. we target a COLA. Mm -hmm. COLA is for both expenses and no, only, no, just I mean, only salary, for salary, for salary wages. Yeah. yeah. So, if people were to get behind in salary wages, and we discovered that, that can always just be addressed the addressed following year. The following year. Yep. It potentially yes. Right. Yep. Yes. So, it'd be prudent to at least figure out a number to make it easier for people to budget with. Mm -hmm. Because if we do fall behind, we can correct that. Yep. Theoretically, yes. Okay. So, did you want to start? Is this is that this sheet or is, or is that? That's the mind? one that I had done last Previously. last week, the okay. last meeting, and then I added the towns that um, already had at asked us to use to compare. Okay. Um, several of the towns don't have a, a COLA chosen yet. Okay. Uh, so, like, Barrie, Belchertown, uh, Leicester, they, don't, they haven't chosen a COLA. But what I'm seeing in the spreadsheet from the towns that did reply is that they range from 6% to 2% is mm -hmm. the lowest. The 2% ones have some type of caveat with them, most of them, that they're, they're because step and grade is also included. So that's on top of step and grade. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're running average about three to three and a half percent across the board. And, and I have towns in here that are, and like I said, these are the towns that re responded to my inquiry. I didn't cherry pick which ones and if they were comps. This can all be sorted based on the size of the budget, uh, the size of the, the tax base. You can sort it every which way to Sunday. Um, I did add in the percentage of receipts for each town to show why some may be higher than, I don't higher know if it's than others. But out of curiosity, what does the state use for state and So the state uses the state COLA. And what's that figure? I don't know uh, because it was never discussed, and so I didn't take the time to look it up. I have no idea what the state COLA is this year. Um, but in order to make the, to see the towns, so you can pick which ones are actually comps in this list, you want to look at the raise and appropriate versus the total budget. And that'll tell you what isn't being covered by money coming in from somewhere else. And then you look at the overall tax base. So if the tax base, so for Brookfield, the total tax base is $380 million in value. We don't want to compare ourselves to Belchertown, which is one of the ones that Marty put up. Their total tax base is $1,975,000,000. Belchertown? Yes, that's their tax base, yes. Um, Lester, another one, one billion four hundred and twenty-seven thousand dollars. Yes, our our taxes are higher than those towns because those towns have a much broader tax have a base tax than base. we do, and it's not a small jump between the two. Um, there were a couple that are comparable, like East Brookfield and Hardwick. Um, let's see, who else did he put in there? Hubbardston, twice the size. Holland is looking at a potential 5% increase, although I don't think they're going to do it. They're meeting tonight and discussing it. And their tax base is, is within, you know, 100 million of ours, so it's not that far off. Um, North Brookfield, a third bigger than us. Spencer, $1,500,000. You don't see those, Tom, because I just added them to my spreadsheet. I, I can make a photocopy yeah, of this. Let's make a copy of that and give it to her. See if you can get it on the big paper. 
Yeah. Do the 11 by 17. Yeah. That, sh that drawer should be full. And this is in the one that you sent out at like 5 o'clock, right? It is actually yeah. in the okay. one that I sent out at like 5 o'clock That's why I'm today. sitting here on my phone. I am actually yeah. listening to Because this is all in there. You can look at the, mm -hmm. the bottom drawer is the big drawer, I think. The big paper. Kelly, what was the I, I can't tell you because I don't have the paper. <laughs> three percent. Took it. Three percent is North Brookfield. Yeah. So so North Brookfield was three percent. Um, they have about twice the tax base that we do. Um, but I'm, I was re referring to Marty brought in a yep. list of towns that have lower tax bills than us yep. that are close in ge geography to us. But they are not apples to apples. apples yeah. And and if you want to compare tax bills, you gotta go apples to apples. I mean, you look at Tisbury, which is on the list in that's in your email, right? Uh, or yeah, Tisbury. Yep. Tisbury. Tisbury on the vineyard. Yes. Yeah. Oh, their tax <laughs> their tax rate was set today, for FY twenty three. It was set today. Their tax rate is two dollars and change. Mm -hmm. Their tax base. Is, is like a hundred billion dollars. I mean, that's an exaggeration, <laughs> yeah. but, but Karen that, will be able to but, tell us in a moment. I, to my mind, the, the, the appropriate comparative is the average or median single family tax bill. Absolutely not. Why, why not? Because the outlying factors of the commercial, industrial, and personal property change the percentage huge, huge that impact. you're going to pay in your taxes. Huge you mean the change the percentage that the residential yes. base covers? Yes. Right. Yes. Because because if you have if you have a, a SIP, which is the acronym for the commercial industrial personal property, because it takes a lot less time to say, um, if you have a CIP that is covering seventy percent of your raise and appropriate, mm -hmm. your tax bill is going to be only thirty percent of that. Whereas our tax rate is our our raise and appropriate is seventy four percent because we are mostly residential. Mm -hmm. So you have to compare p towns with the same demographics. It doesn't have to do with the average residential tax value or single family home value or the single family mm -hmm. home Bill. income mm -hmm. or the single family home um, it, uh, total. It has to do with the percentage of that total to the entire amount raised and appropriated. Is it not but, printing? No. But so I mean, with, a couple of years ago when I was looking at comparisons of Brookfield to other towns, mm -hmm. the town that I found that is the closest in population size, demographics, and finances was Millville. Yep. Uh, yeah. So is Millville, I think, is, is Millville in the list? They're not in the list. It's not in Worcester County. It doesn't have to be in Worcester County. It's certainly closer than Tisbury. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, oh, I was just yeah, saying it, Tisbury is one yeah. of the towns Millville that responded. Millville is one of the closest, the closest ones to us. I think there were a hundred people of the population. And, it, it, look at the, look at and the again, thing. population is not necessarily relevant. Right. Because you may have a, a certain size of tax base and, and it's the same size task phase that Brookfield has, but it's all apartment houses. So their population is three times the size of ours. Their taxes are exactly the same mm -hmm. because it's the tax base that you need to look at. May I assist you? I'm going to have to put two pieces together because one by 17, they added the paper. Yeah. But anyhow, so. And and some of the towns are doing and, and when and as you can see even on the old one some of the towns are doing a hybrid where they did like two percent plus a certain hourly rate. Um, well, for their hybrid cola, not just a yeah, not just a straight percentage. A um, little more complicated, and what it does is it um, allows for that people in lower income brackets are more hit by cost of living. Mm -hmm. changes because more of their income is the things that go into that index mm -hmm. so um, you know there's some question of how we would want to handle that or we just go with what we've always done which is a straight percentage cola mm -hmm. so what 
while they figure that out, I'll be right back. What's that? I was gonna say, while they figure that out, I'll be right back. Yep. <clears throat> so this is the elementary school budget. Yes. And did, did we get a representative there? Did you get to the no. meeting? Okay. Looks like we've got a lot of kids going out of uh, out of town with special needs. like I mean you, we can't see it from a standard like like cola perspective but in going through the school budget the school budget looks they went up in in terms of total cost of salaries which could include like a headcount change as well um, they went up 3.18 percent um, and it looks like a lot of their budget drivers looks like fuel and electricity so it was like the fixed costs that were driving a lot of, uh, and there's a significant increase in like um, transportation for students going out of Brookfield Elementary. Um, as well as a very significant increase in special needs tuition. So that means we've got kids going out of out of town because we can't provide the services that are required to support them fundamentally. Can, can I tell Mr. Holcroft, he asked me about North Brookfield. They're offering sure. a 3% increase and their tax base is roughly 200 million more than ours. Right. So yeah. about a third more than ours, right? Yeah. Yep. And then, uh, you know, so a lot of the dry, a lot of the, the cost drivers in the school to get them to the seven percent wasn't necessarily wages. It's it's other costs like um, you know, even I'd say that really those big drivers are, are foundationally uh, the special special needs costs and then uh, utilities more than anything else. I'm looking at their total administration budget it went down from FY23 yeah, to FY23. Yeah, a small, a a small amount. Retire. A small <laughs> amount, but it yeah. did go down. Yeah. Yeah. Although those retirees are going to hit us in a different right. way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, you know, that's that's the piece. Is it, is is that? I mean, so if you're looking at the school in terms though of of like salary expense it's fun fundamentally 3.2 is, is what we're seeing and that might be from shifts in positions so um so what is the percentage increase of the elementary school budget 
7 7.8, 7.28% total. Okay. Roughly, yeah. Most of it driven by fixed expenses versus salaries. Mm -hmm. yeah. And a lot of it driven by like special needs students yeah. going out of going out of district or going out of at least yeah. our school. Yeah. Things that we don't have as much control over as some other things. Very little control mm -hmm. over. So, um, yeah. So it's not that somebody went to the till and said, we need to have these, you know. And the special needs at our school, I think, is very good. Yeah. <laughs> so if they're getting sent out, there's a reason they're being sent out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We historically have not sent kids out. Right. We've done a very good job of staffing it so that uh, with folks in the skill set and the services in order to provide those services mm -hmm. in house. So if we're doing it, it's because we need to do it. Um, okay. So. Brad, it sounded like you were considering a motion to to at least target three percent. Unless someone can tell me otherwise, I would make a motion to target three percent. Was that a motion? That sounds yeah. like a motion. Yeah. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So that's what we're gonna try okay. to set it at. I'll pop that into the spreadsheet and run okay. it. Okay. Um, then. And I guess from a standpoint of, I know that it sounded like the, the revenue outlook is pretty tight right now. Right now, but only because we don't have any numbers. I mean, right. we have no idea what new growth is going to be. I know that our, our receipts are down from prior year. Fees are down, but she said but receipts weren't down. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. Fees are down, which, which is part of money that we receive. So, but it's spring, and, and that could pick up because a lot of the fees are building permits. They generate a lot of money. Yeah. So that could pick up again. We have traditionally underestimated our receipts by between 10 and 12 percent every year. So if we conservatively guess that we're going to get a 3 percent increase, um, or a 5% increase. We've used three because I asked Lori to give me a guess and she said she wouldn't feel more com she wouldn't feel comfortable assuming more than 3% increase from last year at this point. We're right at right at the cap at the levy limit. Um, I think we have like $68,000 in excess levy if we did the budget exactly the way it was requested. Right. But that includes which is that in, that includes the the sizable most of the, stipends most of the wages, and, yeah. and there are a few really big shifts in the budget that are not necessarily driven by um, pay. So, 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 let, so let's talk those so that we're all aware of them equally. Yeah. Unless you wanted to cover something else first. No, just from my experience, rather than talking about how much the levy limit changes, I would like to understand how much the raise and appropriate is increasing. Uh, compared to fiscal year 23. I found that is the most effective lens through which to measure this. Because I found that if I, if I look at it from a um, levy limit, then if I things can, can happen. If I can get into this from my phone, okay. I will tell you exactly how it's going to affect it. But again, the raise and appropriate is, is heavily influenced by how much money we get from the Fed, the state, true, and from the estimated receipts from the town and, for, and it, for but, phase but three on the but, recap, but doesn't that also impact the levy limit headroom? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so they're they're both numbers are vulnerable to the same variables. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. while she's trying to get into her phone to do what she's trying to do, let me actually cover a couple other things that we talked about at the department head meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, and actually, here, this is a lesson learned. I'd like to continue to hold department head meetings on the same day as when we've got a selectman's meeting so that we can actually have these conversations while Well, now that you meet fresh. on Thursdays, they're the last Thursday yeah. of every month, yeah. so. So, um, but it's the last Thursday, and I think we do first and third. So maybe we need to pull it up into the third one. That way it's fresh the same day. Okay, well, but we there, there's other it. glitches with that, but yeah. I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay. I'm, I don't think it matters to anybody except for the accountant who would oh. like to attend, and, and she's only here every other month on those oh, times. Oh, got it. Okay. So she wants us to change the way we 
do the department head meetings so that she can be at all of them, which means they would change every month based on her schedule. And I no. was like, nah, no. I don't think so. Um, anyway, um, so one of the other things we talked about is that uh, our vaca the vacation time that we offer and the amount and when people get it is archaic and difficult to, to bring in talent because you don't, you get seven days the first July 1st that you're employed, which means you can go upwards of 11 months before you have a single earned vacation day. Mm -hmm. and then you start earning, then you start earning that July 1st, so you really don't have any days until mm -hmm. sometime thereafter. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, don't you normally earn so much vacation for every week you work? No, that's, that's sick time. That's that's how other places work. That's right. how other places work. If if you're getting Depend, depending if I've you're getting PTO, no so idea. PTO is paid time off you can use for whatever you want, whenever you yeah. want, for whatever reason you want, right? Yeah. Vacation time is vacation time, and you earn sick time at a certain rate per oh. month. But if you want to switch it over to PTO, nobody gets vacation. You earn like a day and a quarter or half a day up to a certain cap. That's definitely something that's doable. Yeah, so um, we don't have to decide it tonight, right? But mm -hmm. it's that's a, a discussion that we should have prior to town meeting because I think that is, I think the vacation portion is actually written into the bylaw. So it, would, it is. It would require okay. a bylaw change. Then, yeah, we should so, look into. I think we need to look into starting at the equivalent of two weeks and having it, you know, um, and and actually though, depending on how you write it, you can make it look more like PTO where you, you get a certain mm -hmm. amount earned. Cause, and that way you're not giving people like necessarily like two weeks up front and then, you know, hypothetically someone could come and take their vacation and just be, be gone, mm -hmm. right? Um, we can take a look at what the structure looks like, right? Yeah. But, but you know, where it's two weeks, where do they start getting additional weeks, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, is something that we need to consider from a standpoint of like total package and and keeping getting and retaining employees. Yeah, it definitely seems onerous. It, the way you describe the current system seems very onerous and um, And is it stingy. every year? Is that how that works? It's not until the end of the year then you get your PTO? It's it's weird. I don't even know. So I'm going to get it wrong if I try to explain it. <laughs> vacation time accrues as of July 1st. And it's... If you start working in November, you work until July 1st, and then you get your anniversary date November 1st and you don't get anything accrued until the following July 1st so you've effectively worked a year and a half without any vacation time mm -hmm. no sick time where well, you can earn sick time but you can't take it but you don't it, it earn it until that fiscal year the PTO yeah so so year, yeah. what I did with the we had two employees that started mid-year on their anniversary date we prorated it from the date of their anniversary to the end of the fiscal year, and then on that fiscal year, I get, it started, they got the full amount, so that they would have, now they're on the same calendar as everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, it seemed like the fair thing to do. And when I didn't have any selectmen, so. <laughs> I think we would have voted for that one. I think you would have, too. Um, <laughs> so, um. But anyway, either either one of those boards would have supported that. So, yeah. is is this something that the personnel board should be looking into, or do we really have one at the moment? We have a personnel we, board. We, we have had personnel an board. active personnel board um, the entire time. Uh, okay. The thing that is not maybe not Office three sixty five. My phone's not playing nicely. The personnel boards mandate is to review things and then bring it to the select board so mm -hmm. if you want them to do the legwork that's me holly amy yeah. doug ford and linda so, lincoln yeah, typically we ask them to go look at it and please bring it back to us and what your recommendation yeah, that's, is that, that's what i was thinking was yeah. asking them to, to exactly to do the legwork because it definitely sounds like something that we need to uh, right. consider all right then the the other thing that that got put forth and 
and I didn't, I didn't write down notes, so if I miss any other critical ones, let me know, um, is the, um, there was a request to at least consider um, starting to shift more of the health care cost to the town and the insurance cost to the town versus the employee because the surrounding communities um, on the whole are cover a significantly higher percentage of the health care premiums than Brookfield does. Mm -hmm. So we're at 60 40. Um, the town covers 60. Yeah, or 60, the employee covers 40. Um, there are communities around us that are 80 20. 75, 25, um, and that's one of those shifts that, I mean, I, I couldn't with good conscience recommend it in a year, but mm -hmm. it might be something that we might want to consider a, a phase in plan to, to start to catch up. So, um, I, I can't get, my phone is not playing nicely. That's it's okay. saying I, you cannot open all of Outlook and access everything from here because Okay, what were you trying to get to? I was trying to get to my recap simulator so I could tell Tom what the numbers are oh, mm -hmm. and yeah, how, yeah. It's gonna, okay. how, how it's going to affect the... Yeah. If you could send that to me in an email, I'd appreciate it. Sure, Thank yeah, you. I can do that. I'll send you the whole recap simulator, then you can plug in whatever numbers you want and you can play with it and see how the whole thing interacts and feeds into it. It's got the levy limit, it's got mm -hmm. the LA-5, it's got the LA-13. The whole, it's just like mm -hmm. the whole DLS website in a, in a game version okay. <laughs> gaming I, I, version. I built something similar for the advisory committee last year <laughs> so um so that said um was there anything else that we covered with them relative specifically no they wanted they wanted some continuity in the um the percentage increase so they they can plan appropriately um they and i think this is a trust thing for them at this point as well right and they wanted they wanted us to look at the insurance shifting. Yeah. Um, they wanted us to also look at a plus one option for for the insurance for medical insurance yep. as opposed to family, family or single, or, uh, single mm -hmm. because that that is again a very there aren't a lot of people who have the family plan, so it would be beneficial to a lot of the employees although it would shift the burden upward on the families. Yeah, those who stay on the family plan would but, take a hit. Yeah. But the but the argument there is that the people who don't have families are paying for those families. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's it works both ways, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, that won't affect everybody evenly, but it will assist our seniors because if we shift the burden of what we pay Toward the town more, then it lessens the burden for the for the insur the health insurance on the seniors that are part of the system still, mm -hmm. because they're we still cover theirs. Um, so it helps a broader spectrum of residents, not just the town hall itself. Okay. Yeah, what's the percentage? 60-40. Correct. Mm -hmm. We're paying 60 percent on. Yes. The yes. It's actually ex extremely expensive. Um, it's it's over eight hundred dollars a month. That's a lot yeah. of money. Everyone's paying. Um, but and again, the neighboring towns are paying a larger a larger share than what Brookfield is paying, and that's something that they brought to our attention. Yeah. Other towns are paying higher than that. Correct. Yes. Yeah. No, the town, no, the town themselves the are town paying seventy-five percent. They're, they're paying like eighty twenty. Eighty twenty or seventy-five twenty-five. So it's it's a it's a really big difference, and it, it's the insurance here is expensive to begin with. So it, it's it's a it's a heavy burden on our our seniors who are paying this. I mean, not just the res, not just the employees, but it's so the insurance is supposed to go up roughly seven and a half percent or more. Um, our, our liability insurance is going up roughly 10%. Our health insurance is going up 7.5% or maybe more, maybe 7.8. Maybe I'm meeting with them next week, so I'll know that number solid next week. 
um, but they, they estimated 10% on the general liability because we had big claims over the last year. So these are things that we can't actually control at this point, although I am trying to mitigate the damage by implementing a roof. Um, so our, our problems have come from roofs, and we have another roof that's a problem. And so a roof inspection, maintenance, and replacement schedule. And actually, Brad is helping by taking his drone and taking shot photos of all the roofs so that we have an actual record Fun, of what yeah. they look like. So we can <laughs> go up next year and say, all right, this is where a problem was. Has it deteriorated further? Do we see any other problems? OK, I'm seeing water damage. I'm seeing potential for water damage up on the roof by the windows where they meet the. Um, yeah, just the sat, like for instance, just the sashes of the windows up right. here. The paint's all gone and it's now beginning to. Yeah, it's spongy oh, wow. looking. Right. It's spongy yeah. looking. So, so I saw that. I saw some broken slate. I saw that there is. Um, and I have to look up and see how slate actually degrades. It, it, I don't know if slate actually does degrade. I think it just breaks. But there, break, yeah. there are marks on the roof showing where there's constant water that are not in other areas of the roof. So I want to know why. But so this program will allow us to inspect the, yeah. the roofs and make sure that they're properly repaired, immediately repaired, and replaced in a timely fashion. So we can budget for that with, with free cash and say, hey, this is going in the roof park well, bucket. I, I you know? would be, I'd be interested in looking at the other buildings after walking downstairs with Don yesterday at the foundations in the pylons, because these need to be repointed. Or we're going to start losing <laughs> the floor. The pylons need to be repointed, or we're going to lose the floor. Yeah, the They're beginning to crumble. Okay, the last time that I I dealt with the spalling in the um, in the pylons, we actually had to lift the town hall and replace the pylon, but it didn't affect the floor at all. So I'm, you lost me on the floor thing. I'm just saying, if it's not addressed, like. Catching it early enough will avoid needing to replace needing, it. Yeah, right, that right. would be well. The whole building had listed the last town hall. We it looked like there was heaving over that, which I think is why mm. that's heaved up. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another good thing that we. So if if we're. I mean, that's just what we saw here. What's going on? Over, is anyone ever? I don't even. Is there a basement in the library? I have no idea. It, as long as we're cognizant of these things, this right. will help reduce our our liability. Um, our it's cyber. Free to look. Our cyber <laughs> insurance is uh, they're requiring a lot of, of major end user biometrics. And um, I, I have a big, long email from Jacob. I'll forward to you that explains all the different things. And the insurance is requiring these things. That's one of the reasons that the tech budget is a little higher than, sorry. Shh. Quiet. Um, I have it on silent, but apparently the alarm doesn't care. Uh, the um, the tech budget is is bouncing up because it's being required for the cyber insurance, and so that's another one of those control things. Um, yeah, I thought the tech budget was pretty menial. It actually is over the grand scheme of things. The tech budget is not much at all, and you should actually have a printout of it in your packet. I think. I, it's definitely in the spreadsheet I sent you. You've got the right. electric, the yeah. electricity, where everything's compiled and what makes the big number in the yeah, budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. All right. Um, it ex those are all the different softwares that we use for the finances and for maintaining, you know, the, the email and the website. And the email and the website are actually some of the cheaper ones. Um, and then the the funding for. And every includes all of the upgrades that are required by the insurance, the labor, and the um, server, and the the bits and pieces that go with it. But I will forward you Jacob's email so that it's a very articulate explanation of, of what we're doing with IT. Okay. So I don't want to cut the discussion short on this, but do we want to hold off on further 
budget discussions until we go ahead and, and recalculate based off of what we're mm -hmm. planning on for the wages. Yep. Unless there were other questions that you all had tonight that you wanted mm -hmm. to go over. And I think the one other thing I'd like to cover tonight relative to the budget is I'd like to go ahead and let's go through and make a selection as to who's going to be the POC for which departments for for basically like department liaison to handle yeah. like the mm -hmm. budget discussions. So I think that's the other thing I'd like to cover tonight relative to the budget if that's acceptable. I don't see why it wouldn't be. Okay. So um, so I mean general government that's us. I don't think we need a, a liaison for that, do we? I don't think so. Okay. Um, likewise with all the I stuff. I mean, I like talk to myself all the time. So. Right, there you go. <laughs> That's only when you need an expert opinion, Kelly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so I'd say everything down to, so who wants to liaise with the town accountant? So are, are we picking people to liaise with these departments because we're questioning their budget? No. Or or do you just want to talk to the ones who you have questions for the budget? You could just talk to the ones that we have questions for. The because the, the outsourced budget is a contract. Right, I was going to say that's outsourced contract. contract. It's, so. it's the audit, which is the fee is what the fee yes. is. Right. And, okay. and her expense account is level funded. Yep. Do you want to? Nope. Okay. All right. So advisory is level funded. funded. Uh, assessors, is there any questions there? Uh, they're... they're Board is asking for a larger stipend. Their wages are what they are. The um, consulting fee is level funded, and so is the expenses. So the only, you know, we're going to take care of what we're going to, the three percent for the other two items. Otherwise, it's not. It's just the. Right, so they were asking, asking they were asking for a twenty percent increase. So do you want to speak with the board of assessors? Are you going to increase all of the stipends across the board? Are you just going to, you gonna let recommend the level fund? Are you gonna just recommend what the department asked for? Because Board of Health is the other um, department that's asking for more money and um, zoning. I think those are the only ones that have asked for an increase. But Board of Health is asking for it probably because they're now paying. No, amount. Board of Health is asking for it because they're going to have more meetings. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the stipend for the board. Their budget is one that we need to talk to them about. That's a budget that, that needs some discussing because they're asking for things. Um, how, did, how did Board of Health salary wind up such an odd number, 38, 39? Probably through COLAs. Let me see where the... Yeah, but we haven't done applied COLAs to Board of Health salaries typically. Well, is the salary the stipend or yes. to the board? Okay. That's the stipend for the board. Is That's there a difference they're calling, between for. calling it a salary and calling it a stipend? Yes, because a salary is paid for hours worked, and time put in. A stipend is because, hey, thanks for showing up. Okay. It doesn't matter if you have no meetings or if you have mm -hmm. 100 meetings, you're getting a thank you, basically. It's not a wage. It's not something meant to mm -hmm. be a wage. Okay. Where to help this where? Down in the... They're on page three. Yeah, so it says Board of Health salary, but it is actually just a stipend, and that is they want to increase the number of their meetings, and I don't know how they pay themselves for that. Um, they asked for 6400 for their Board of Health clerk, which has been put into the all-board clerk salary, which is why I have a zero in the recommendation line, because it's part of her salary because she's doing the job. She's already been, um, it's already been placed in her lap. So that was added to the hours of the Albert's clerk, which is what it was originally intended to do in the first place. They didn't want to lose Brianna, and Brianna wound up leaving for a better job. So, mm -hmm. um, But they are asking for um, 
a community health program for $950, but that's part of a contract that we're in that doesn't cost us any money. And if you look at that amount, it's almost, it's, it's much higher than what we were paying when we were paying for it. Yeah, I remember that this did go into that contract with Lester. Yes, it did. That's being provided. Yes, it did. And so what are they, at, what are they intending to do additional with the money they're asking? They're not. Okay. But that's why we need to talk to them because this is the very first time that they put this budget together and they weren't they, they were very iffy on what they should and shouldn't include in the budget. Because Mike put it together before. Correct. Um, there is a health agent in here for a thousand dollars, which if you look at that, that's three hundred dollars more than we paid when we had a health agent and that's also part of the IMA um, with Lester. Okay. And, so, and they have, the, the IMA has three health agents, so it's not like we're so, going to be so short a health who, agent. Who would like to go speak with the Board of Health? I'll talk to him. Okay. So Tom's got Board of Health. All right. Um, and again, I'm, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure it's just because they weren't really clear on how to do this. Um, their, their Board of Health expenses, I don't know what they're basing that increase on. I don't, um, the transfer station, they have hazardous waste day with North Brookfield, which is an additional $5,000, but this is not a new program. They've done it in the past. Oh no, we haven't done it in years. Yeah, I was gonna say, I don't it's think we've done it. It's been years. That's not what North Brookfield told me. Years since we participated in that. Okay. So I didn't know if that was in their expense budget already. <coughs> and then they it's dumped another 5000 but the contract right? doesn't say how yeah, much it's going to cost. Yeah, I'd go to North Brookfield, because I got property in North Brookfield. And yeah, I know that Brookfield doesn't participate, with, or hasn't participated See, with them. For years. So, but there's, they, we don't know what the cost is. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's going to go up or down. Yeah. So that's something that needs to be um, spoken with them about. And the transfer station expenses, that is, I, I don't know if they just took a percentage and went up on everything, or how they how they did the math. So that's something that needs to be um, discussed with them as well. So transfer station is also board of health. So mm -hmm. so, when's their next meeting? Because Tom probably needs to get on their agenda, or else just talk to their chair. What, what you have to on? ask their their clerk or go on the my town government. I don't mm -hmm. keep track yeah. of the board of health meetings. I, no, it was more of a question. Is that one, if he if he's wanting to talk about it, do they need to put it on their agenda? If he wants to talk to the whole board, yes. Okay. If he wants Mark to talk to, to just the chairman, then that, you know, and have that conversation. But the board is the one who actually should be voting the budget. Yeah. And Maureen has been very good about make, going to the board and having the board walk through all of what, what's yeah. going on. Yeah. Okay. Um, The library has some massive increases, which I, I know Brenda's got expl explanations for, but you may want to speak with the trustees. Fred, do you want that one or do you want me to take it? Um, I, I can take it. Okay. I know part of the increase is they created a new job of assistant library director, and that came with a substantial salary and a contract, um, which this board is supposed to sign because the trustees hire the director. The director hires the staff, but I don't believe the director has the authority to enter to bind the town in a contract. Should I meet with library or the trustees? I would I would ask to meet with the, the trustees and Brenda, all of them together. I mean, together. the trustees meetings have Brenda there all the time. So just they do. go to one of their meetings and say, hey, you know, this is. And let them know that's what you want to talk Yeah, we about. just, I just want, I just have some questions about the budget. Can you explain yeah, give how this works? Because their budget went up 34%. Um, now when they submit their budget to you, do they 
give any explanation? No. Um, they kind of do, sort of, in an email. I can send you that email. Yeah, that'd be great. Whatever you have. That would be the same for the Board of Health if they had any information, or was it all verbal? The Board of Health sent me an email saying that I should have sent them instructions with all exclamation points. So, because, you know, how, I, I don't know, never mind. So pretty much um, highways going up, but I think that that is substantially salary. I don't see a lot of big increase in there anywhere else. I, he brought he actually put in less money for diesel because it's trending down. Will Ish. it continue to trend down for Probably. another fiscal year? Probably. It was up pretty high. And the same with gasoline. Yep. Um, so then we've got the wages. And the highway office administrative assistant is actually based on her real hours. Last right. year he took Cindy's pay and just added the cola to it. Oh, and, and new, didn't calculate the lower lower rate. Didn't use the lower rate that mm -hmm. the clerk had, so they over budgeted for that particular position. Um, this I told them this year he had to use her actual rate and the actual hours that she worked. Mm -hmm. So that's why that's um, a big difference. And nothing else is really a substantial increase there, so it's basically salaries, which surprises me because expenses are outrageous right now. Yeah, and and he, he popped them up thirteen hundred dollars. So I don't know if anybody wants to talk to Highway, but their budget doesn't look to me like it's it's questionable. I the only thing I have to say about Highway is I would like to go talk with Ryan again, which I planned on anyways, but I'm telling you guys just about the pavement management plan going forward and what he suspects. And Yeah. If, if you're planning on doing that, you might as well cover the budget stuff while you're there. I mean, really, it would just be a case just, of... What, what would you like to know about the budget? Um, there really isn't... There's that. not so much questions other than given what the management plan is, is the expense is set where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that we want to put more money into it, but mm -hmm. at the same time, we need to be cognizant of... Yeah, materials have gone up over 34%. Right. right. So... Since last year. What are we going to be able to get done with that budget based on, mm -hmm. you know... Granted, we are trying to leverage grant monies where we can to do portions of the roads, but there's a limited... And, and I don't... This isn't... I'll bring it up, but I, I don't know where this discussion should take place. One of the issues I saw right away was that highway department is doing grass cutting and weed whacking, for instance. I don't know if that's a good use of their time. I don't know any highway departments that, unless they're in a big city, that don't do that for the town. They do lawn maintenance for the town buildings. Really? Yes. <clears throat> They mow the, the they mow the funny. fields for the for the bulk fields. They they take care of all the cemeteries. They take care of all the municipal buildings. In every town I've worked in, that's how it's worked. Mm -hmm. But I've always worked in towns that are of a like size to Brookfield, so that is a normal function of the highway department. They also have seasonal people that come in and assist with that mm -hmm. that maintenance as well. And they have a new a whole new person which they didn't have before because we didn't hire them like super lickety split out of the gate when the new fiscal year started, did we? I don't remember, honestly. It was pretty quick, actually. Was it? But that should lessen the burden or at least spread the workload, having a whole another full-time person there. Yeah. yeah, don't they use the, um, I know there's a program for say seniors to help work off some of their tax obligation. And I think some of that is doing some of the mowing I'm not familiar with them using any senior abatement um, okay. people, yeah, but that doesn't they mean do. they don't. It they just do. means I don't. I don't yeah. know about yeah. it. They have one. They have one that comes in and, and 
does the, the tax work off. Mm. That's great. Mm -hmm. I got a question if I may ask. So we hired a fourth highway guy and we're still keeping all these seasonal people on. I mean, what's everybody really doing? We only have one one so seasonal the people. Guys, right? they were gonna go by, by, if we got a fourth guy. Madam Chair, through you? Sure. The um the seasonal worker budget decreased after the hire of the new full-time person. Increased? Decreased. decreased. Oh, went decreased. down. Oh, by how much? Uh, let's see, uh, by about one, oh, almost half. It's, uh, 17 and change to 10,000. It was 17 and the uh, latest budget, oh, if I read this right, is, it, yes, it, it almost half. <clears throat> I don't see that. Uh, Kelly, I'm looking at uh, the this seasonal. Is seasonal worker. Oh, yeah, okay, yes. So the seasonal worker for FY22 and FY23, we cut cut it down. Mm -hmm. okay. And then it's, it's yeah, okay. It's staying there. So. Yeah. Close to there, yeah. Okay. So, <coughs> so that. Go through. So cemetery. What was the other part? Cemetery wants to do paving, oh. and they're supposed to work with Ryan to get a bid and a quote so that they can mm -hmm. fix the roads in the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So that's not under expenses. I'm assuming they're going to do a warrant article for that? I don't know if they're going to do a warrant article. We were talking to CMRPC about grant money for it. Okay. Um, and, and I think the and state's he, also... And I think yes, Ryan said he would use town funds and Chapter 90 money. But I don't know where he thought that was going to come from. You can't do Chapter 90 for that. I'm just saying, I don't know where, I don't, this is all yeah. hearsay <laughs> because I'm not part of that mm -hmm. conversation. So, but that's something that you might want to talk to Ryan about to see if he, that's on his radar in this budget because Saturday. Mike is saying that he had spoken with Ryan about getting the cemeteries roads repaid. Roads repaid repaved yeah. yeah so Mike well, it wouldn't be repaved it would be graded probably no they're paved they would be repaved are they really yeah not all of it but some a good chunk of it is yeah. there, there are paved roads in there and they're not in the best shape maybe it's because they're not in good shape I didn't realize they're paved Maybe. So there's not anything that really sp spikes out on council on the aging, although they did increase their expense a couple thousand. They actually did, didn't. Oh, what no, they did is they shifted the Medicare right. cost into the their expense. programming cost so that they could offer more programming because no one's using the Medicare. Medicare. Yeah, and that way by combining the budgets they can make better use of it. Right. Was and, that what and we just talked about yesterday with CMRPC? Mm -hmm. Okay, and then uh, Medicare is refusing, or Westbrook Field is not giving us any of the data we've asked for, so I've told them not to pay the bill. It's a four thousand dollar bill that it could be one person using that service, and that is a very expensive cab ride. Yep. And so until they can tell us how many towns are involved, what our portion is, how it's divided, and what kind of use we have, then I can the money. And then I, I'm the one who told them to take that money and put it into their expense account because it level funds their budget right. and increases the programming at the same time. And honestly, yeah. That was one of the things that was really big that came out of the master plan public input was that more programming for seniors. Yep. And they're actually doing a great job. I gotta give high kudos to the Council on Aging because of all the programming that they've implemented over the last year. It looks like veterans was level funded predominantly. Yeah, society. that's what that's what he had asked for. Yep. Um, I don't see, town clerk may want to increase his budget for the elections, wages, and expenses. That's something in light of what just happened. We may want to talk to Mike about include increasing that. Well, but this year's not a year for, this year's not an anything year, right? 
it's an off year. It's, it's a off slow year. It's an off year, but if somebody quits and we need an election. <laughs> <laughs> then again, the a year from a, a year from now, it's going to be presidential primaries, and that's going to be those are going to be in fiscal year 24. Ew. We will have that. Yep. We. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly, uh, before we get too far beyond the veterans agent, are we doing a good job of submitting for our reimbursement of the expenditure? My understanding is we get reimbursed for 75% of the veterans money we spend. That's a Lori question. Okay. Um, and I don't have it the answer back to as, that. It comes back. It comes back in the cherry sheet. It comes back, but we ha but my understanding is we have to put in for it, and if we're not putting in for it, we don't get it. So it's just a matter of making sure that we're submitting the paperwork. I don't think I've seen a year that it hasn't come back when I've looked at the cherry Or that it hasn't, the right amount hasn't come back? We don't know what the right amount is, I guess. Or, or just, I guess. So we get that, money back, but is it the right amount? I or think is that's it, what is Tom's it, asking. Are, are we, yeah, it's like, because if it's 75% and we're spending $85,000, then we should be getting about $60,000 back. Which I think we get roughly 68. I was, was going to say that order 68. of magnitude, that's roughly what it's come back. Okay, I, I don't remember what the number is. I mean, if, if Off it, the top if, of my head, I don't either, but it, okay. it, that sounds right, right, if that makes any sense. Okay, and for some reason I thought that money would come back from the federal government, not the state, but it's a, it's a yeah, state. It's a state thing. Okay. No, that comes, that comes in on the, on the cherry sheet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, not the cherry sheet, I'm sorry. It comes it, in on the, in the budget, like the, the estimated receipts and... Yeah, and, and ultimately expenses. it might track back to some sort of federal funding, but it comes to us via the state. Right. We deal with the state, yeah. and, that's, and that's who cuts the check. Yeah, it's just like CDBG is technically federal funds, mm -hmm. but it comes through state awards. Okay. So. I think it's 68. I seem to remember yeah. that number being in there. That sounds right. And the offset right. receipts. Um, okay, thank you. The tree warden, I see that. Obviously, jumped up. Did he get a? Did he submit? I saw something. That report is amazing. I haven't seen. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I was like, what? Yeah. Was, was oh yeah, it was forwarded to everybody. Yeah. It's in your mail somewhere. Yeah. I saw it with just there was like a few trees. Yeah, no, and it was pretty. Like he actually has a. That was just. This is what I've done in the last month. I'm like, oh, right. wow. This is what I did with my You're summer a real vacation. Tree warden. <laughs> yeah. But where did he come up with the? I mean. There's an explanation which I can I can send you, and, and it's but it's very did, logical. Part I, I of didn't it is miss something. You just, no, part uh, of it is um, he he wants to have specific. He has certifications he needs to keep up, so there's like a few hundred dollars in there for that. Mm -hmm. But he's earmarked some very large trees that need to be done, and and cataloging the trees and make in doing. It's it's actually a. a it's a well done mm -hmm. request, and I'll see if I can. I know that I forwarded everything I got to Adcom, but I didn't forward you guys everything I got because you would have been absolutely inundated with emails. Mm -hmm. um, but I do have them compiled. I also have them printed. But I can I can send that. But it's it's definitely worth the money. One tree can take five thousand dollars. Oh no, I know. And well, you had well, a five thousand dollars budget. Four seems like a long. But we still have we still it, have the, money. the money in the article. So we had put aside sixty thousand. There's roughly fifty four and change left, because some of it was used to do some tree work over this last summer. Oh, so mm -hmm. there's like a bank account sitting there. Yes. We, yeah, we, yeah, we have a bunch of money yes. that we set aside a couple years back. Okay. Yeah. Because we knew that we had a backlog of trees. Right. Mm -hmm. So he yeah. never, he hasn't, I mean, we voted for that years ago, so it never really got touched. Correct. It was two years ago, I think. In 2021, you voted for it, um, I think. I'm not positive. Yeah. And, and it was not touched until this summer. Right. Right. So that, yeah. that's something that I'm sure is going to be depleted in a very helpful way. Yeah, the trees. Yeah, well, some yeah. of the trees I saw. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and so, are we going to be paying for his certifications? Is well, he is certified, so so maintain? it would make sense that we would we would assist him in maintaining those. Okay. I know and, that. But that's really the only. That's all he's going to cost us, right? Yes. Okay. That's all he's going to cost us. Okay. Yeah. I I had heard some concerns from people who had seen the budget that thought and. I didn't get a lot of detail he's, on it. He's, so al he's already earned the like four hundred dollars. Yeah, that he's asked for. He's he asked for two. I think two certification classes, and I think they they run somewhere between two hundred and three hundred total. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm and, not sure. And, and, and that's given, it. He's not asking for any pay. And, and, and given that it's a, given that he's not asking for pay, I see it. And given the quality of the work, I 
see it as a bargain to help him maintain yeah. his certifications. Yeah, I, yeah absolutely. I and and, I mean, and, and just he clearly those, knows what he's doing. And this is what he does for a living as a full-time job as well. Yeah, I mean, it's like just reduce the town's liability by getting rid of those mm -hmm. trees that are going to fall on someone someday. Yeah. Well, there was just an incident. I don't know how much people, it happened to be a woman my mother works with on 148, and it came right through the car. Like I think maybe I, a month ago now. I think Your I, mom works oh, at yeah. West Brookfield nursing home? No, no, no. Oh, so it another was, one? It was in Brookfield. Oh my God, I know. Yeah. But the woman that, that was hit, that I'm aware of. No, she didn't, the police, she filed a report with the police department. I actually questioned to see if she was gonna try to come at the town for anything, but I don't think so. So there was an incident um, over the summer, which is another thing that, you know, oh, it's another Hill one Road. of the dry. Oh, Hill Road. Yeah, where a tree Very was similar thing cut happened. and it fell onto oh, a no. car okay. that was in the yeah. in the road. And it was nicked by the mower. And, and it, took, it nicked. <laughs> it <did. laughs> Crash. And um, so there was, a, there was a claim for that. Soft tissue injury. Mm. Sudden yeah. stops can be or, yeah. hard on you, yeah. even mm -hmm. if there's no bones involved, you yeah. know. So. so, so yeah, so the tree warden's budget I, is, I mean, we, I'll send you the information. Yep. So now it makes sense why it's only 12-4 if we're sitting on that much money. Yeah, that's because that's <laughs> we still have a, we still have a bank account to work yeah. on. So. Um, so highway, we already talked. Board of Health we already talked. Fire bounced up. Fire bounced up. Not, Again? not every year that I've seen in my. Um, you can see that they were over budget last year. Yep. And their wages and their expenses, and and I have a spreadsheet that shows they're over budget almost every single year. Yep. Um. So I, what's, I what's driving the wages increase? Because the chief. Well, this this wage increase was based on that eight, the eight point seven. Okay. So when you drop it to the the three percent instead of the eight point seven, you're going to see a big difference, and then mm -hmm. we'll see where where we wind up. Because some of these are are barely bumped up at all. Mm hmm. I don't really see anything else. Yeah. Water went up, but that's cost of, um, that's that's primarily cost of materials. There's not, but I believe they're also increasing their rates. Is that correct? Yeah, the water rates? Yeah. Yes, we have. Okay. Yeah, and and I, I did have a question actually and if you don't mind, and the commissioner's salary it. went up as well, and this one as well. Yeah. Well, and the salary went up on that the eight point seven or whatever it was. It would fall on that guideline, so that yeah. And you did it on the stipends as well. Uh, yeah, three hundred dollars total, I think. And then I know though that Dennis had brought up in one of the previous department had meetings about getting a true secondary operator. Or, I didn't hear that. Dennis, I think, Dennis and I think you brought up in a previous meeting about mm -hmm. needing to start to plan to get a second operator. You voted yeah. to give them permission to pursue that right. at yeah, that one was of the meetings ago. already? Yeah. We're not talking about doing that this year. Okay. Uh, we're looking at two options. Um, yeah. How we could get at this point, we're looking at part time. Okay. Uh, it's kind of complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. Yeah. Yep. So, other than that, um, I think we're I think we're good. I already explained the the increase in the insurance. Amy lowballed it, uh, but then the insurance company came back recently, like within the last week, and said, "Nope, ten percent." Which is one of the reasons we're looking at another insurance company for right. liability insurance. Yep. Mm -hmm. To see if we can chop that a little bit. Yeah. Kelly, are we looking to centralize the utilities on the budget? 
Only the electricity. Okay. Everybody has a different idea of what utilities are, mm -hmm. which I found out in my language wasn't clear enough when I asked people. I said, just say, give me your utility, because to me, utility is electric. Mm -hmm. And I should have just said, I just need the electric bills, because I want to see what we're spending on electricity. Mm -hmm. And people sent me their electric and their cable and their, um, their heat. heat. And I'm like, no, 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 I just want electricity. So that's all I, I wanted to do is just do the electricity. Mm -hmm. It'll make things uh, much easier in accounting. It won't change the price. Everybody's going to have to still pay their own bills. Mm -hmm. We're not centralizing the payment. We're just centralizing the account so that it's trackable. Okay. And, and just for your awareness, one of the things that came up again at the department head meeting was there's like $33,000 that we over budgeted for debt this last year that the only place you can allocate it is debt, is but debt, we need yeah. a town hall, or we need a town meeting vote in order to do the reallocation. Okay. So, um, I was proposing that, that we take free cash and we pay off 18 Common Street, and we can reallocate that debt toward that pay down, reducing what we actually have to take use out of free cash to pay off the entire loan. And then okay. we just own 18 Common Street, no yeah. more interest, no more payments. Yeah. So we, we use, so basically we plan to, you're thinking we'll plan to pay off 18 Common Street. Yeah. Some of that will be free cash and some of that will be reallocated from fiscal year 23 debt yeah. that was over budgeted. Yes. Yes. Well, okay. it's actually fiscal year 22 Two. debt yeah. that w that hit the, hit the um, free cash oh, for, really? for 23. But, it, but it's an encumbered form of free cash. But we, yes, but we can only debt. use it for debt. So, okay. so we're going to take that and wipe it off of the free cash um, deductions. So that'll help our free cash next year. It makes, makes sense to, yeah. if that's all we can use it for. Mm. Okay. Pay, find some debt and pay it off. Okay, so are we, are we good for tonight relative to the mm. budget? Because I'd like to move on to the executive session. I'm good. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we have to make a funny yeah. motion. We have to make, we a, have funny to make a funny motion. Do we have minutes to approve? Hmm? Do we have minutes we to don't. approve for the agenda? Just to Yes. Oh, uh, we do. And I'm sorry, Beth, but that should only take a few minutes. Yep. Uh, <laughs> can I get a motion to approve the minutes for uh, 216, 23, and 6917? Right. I move that we approve the minutes for those two meetings. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks Aye. for keeping me on track there, gentlemen. So uh, I need a motion to move to executive session and to adjourn from that session uh, approximate to exemptions two and three. All right. So I make a motion to go to executive session under exemptions number two and number three to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel, police chief contract, and to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, New England Police Benevolent Association, and then adjourn the open meeting no, not to direct, directly from executive session yeah not to reconvene an open not to session. reconvene an open session second all in favor coughlin aye uh kadelsky aye regan aye it's a wrap folks